Good day, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this 14th day of November, and we're going into a new week here, and uh, today's topic is titled, First Things First, but before I get started on that, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Praise God for Jesus Christ, amen, and he's Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace, and all that stuff. Uh, Brother Ed had a really good uh, message this morning in the Sunday School Hour. And then Brother James had a good uh, message on charity. Um, so go check those out uh, on your own time uh, on the website at www.jameswnox.org or the uh, YouTube channel by typing in James Knox Ser Sermons. Amen. All right, so uh, today's a good scripture song, so we're going to start with that, and this is Psalm 103.12, and uh, this is a fun little uh, scripture song here that Brother Dean, or scripture that Brother Dean put into a song, and he drags out the part where he uh, says the word far, so we'll try to see how, how far we can go, amen? So uh, press play, and we'll start with the scripture song, amen? <laughs> Psalms 103, 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. All right, let's see if we can do this. As far as the east is from the west, as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. So far, so far, as far as the east is from the west. So far as the east is from the west. So far and far you our chances from us. Amen. So far. So far. As far as the east is from the west. As far as the east is from the west. So far and moved our transgression from us. So far, so far. Hey Amen. That's a good one. Uh, so I'll try that again towards the end of the broadcast and maybe do that a couple more times since it's a good one and uh, see how, how uh, long we can hold that far. Amen. So, all right, so now it's time to get into today's topic for this 14th day of November, titled, First Things First. And it says here in Ephesians 6.10b and 11a, it says, Be strong in the Lord, and in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God. Amen. And uh, good passage there about the whole armor of God. Uh, so, matter of fact, let's go ahead and read that really quick. And... Read about this uh, whole armor of God here. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6. Alright, so let's see here. Verse six, uh, chapter 6 and let's see here. Uh, we'll start in verse 10. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the... Uh, Preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, 
and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching there unto with all uh, perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I, or that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Amen. And so that's the whole armor of God. Praise the Lord. And uh, Brother James has a lot of good sermons on that uh, that he did way back in 2011, uh, titled "The Whole Armor of God." So go check those out. Uh, good series there. All right. So let's get into the topic here. Uh, the author today is. DC, that would be the initials for uh, Dennis uh, Coral, and he's an evangelist of Claysburg, PA. So let me read you what he wrote on this topic of first things first. All right, he says here, the first thing I need to do is be strong in the Lord. Amen. The second thing I need to do is put on the armor of God, the whole armor of God, so that I can stand or, stay, or that I can stay strong in the Lord, so that my strength in God is protected. But if I am not strong in the Lord, the armor is not going to do much for me uh, when I don't have relationship with God, when there is uh, nothing to protect. Worship comes first, then standards, separation, and uh, walls of uh, principle to protect my worship and to protect my walk, walk with God. Uh, then can, uh, excuse me, they can be done simultaneously. It's not like one has to be first and the and then the other, but there is no sense in having a, a wall if there is nothing inside the wall to protect, all right? Uh, I'm not minimizing the importance of walls or se of separation. I am maximizing the importance of a walk with God, he says, of an honest, genuine relationship with God. Uh, you need a temple in your life, and you are the temple of God. Uh, but for many, there is no fellowship with God. There is no communion with Him. The only uh, time you think about Him is when you're in church. Who ouch. Uh, the rest of the time, God doesn't get much attention. You have uh, no scheduled time with God. Uh, God says, first, I need a temple in my life, and then I need to put some walls up to protect that walk with God. Amen. So let's make sure we're always having the full, the whole armor of God. Amen. And that is Jesus Christ. He is the whole armor of God, Jesus himself. And so that's part of the series of messages that Brother James did way long time ago on Ephesians chapter 6. So go check those out on his uh, uh, website there. You can order, order them through the store. It's uh, www.jameswnox.org. Amen. All right, so that is the end of the topic. First things first. All right, so uh, I wanted to sing this hymn here before I get into the hymn story. This is a uh, one that we sang in church this morning, and I really like this one. It's uh, titled Sound the Battle Cry, and this was written by William F. Uh, Sh Sherwin. And it was written uh, 1828 is in, from 1828, excuse me, 1826 to 1888 is when he lived. And so, wait a minute, if you have the blue book, the blue hymnal, uh, Great Hymns of the Faith, it's page 413 in the book. All right, so let me try to see if I can sing this a cappella here. All right, <clears throat> here we go. Sound the battle cry, see the foe is nigh, raise the standard high for the Lord. Gird your armor on, stand firm everyone, rest your cause upon his holy word. Rouse and soldiers, rally round the banner, ready, steady, pass the word along. Onward, forward, shout aloud, Hosanna, Christ is captain of the mighty throng. Strong to meet the foe, marching 
on we go, while our cause we know must prevail. Shield and banner bright, gleaming in the light, uh, battling from for the right will never can fail. Rouse then, soldier, rally round the banner, ready, steady, pass the word along. Onward, forward, shout aloud, Hosanna, Christ is captain of the mighty throng. O thou God of all, hear us when we call, help us one and all by thy grace. When the battle's done and the victory's won, may we wear the crown before thy face. Rouse then, soldiers, rally round the banner, ready, steady, pass the word along. Onward, forward, shout aloud, Hosanna, Christ is captain of the mighty throng. Amen. I like that song. That's a good one. Sound the battle cry. Page 413 in the blue book. Great hymns of the faith. Amen. All right. So, um, go ahead now and get into the hymn story. i got to find the, the instrumental part of the hymn here. I am thine, O Lord. So, let me get here really quick. So... I am thine, O oh Lord. Oop. All right, we will get there. Right. Let's see. There we go. All right, let's see if we can kind of find a good one here. Good instrumental. What will be this one? Finish your bit, thing. Uh, Sorry about that. Mm hmm. Gotta get through these ads here. All right. Let's see. Turn that up. All right, I wanted to get the tune there. Okay, Oop. put that there. All right, now I'll get into the hymn here, see if I can try to sing this without the background music. All right, so this is uh, titled, I Am Thine, O Lord, another one by Fanny J. Crosby and William H. Uh, Doan. Uh, or, yeah, Doan. And uh, so let me re sing this here. I am thine, O Lord. All right, let me see. I'm trying to get here. I am the Lord. I have heard that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I am Lord. I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith. And be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Oh, the pure delight of a single hour that before thy throne I spend. 
When I kneel in prayer and with thee, my God, I communed as friend with friend. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. There are depths of love that I cannot know till I cross the narrow sea. There are heights of joy that I may not reach Till I rest in peace with Thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, To the cross where Thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, To Thy precious bleeding side. Amen. All right, I'll go back to the beginning there. And that was the hymn, For I Am Thine, O Lord. Amen. And this was written in 1875, and the passage is from Hebrews 10.22. So I'm going to grab the Bible here and go to Hebrews 10, verse 22. All right, Hebrews 10.22. And it says here, uh, all right, so it says here, Let us draw near... With a true heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled uh, from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Amen. And uh, so, praise the Lord. Alright, so that's um, probably good to read the whole entire chapter there, to get the understanding of what uh, is being spoken of. Amen. So, uh, read all of chapter 10. Alright, so now let's get into the hymn story here. On the hymn, I Am Thine, O Lord, written in 1875. It says here, it says, She's called the Queen of American Hymn Writers and the Mother of Congregational Singing in America. During her 95 years, Fanny Crosby wrote over 8,000 hymns. In addition, she was one of the three most prominent evan evangelical uh, leaders in America during the last part of the 1800s, the others being D.L. Moody and Iris Sankey. Uh, she was one of America's most popular preachers and lecturers. <laughs> well, we won't uh, get into that again. Uh, how women are supposed to be silent in the church and not preach in the pulpit. But, uh, uh, you know all about that, so we won't get into that today, but... Women are supposed to stay silent in the church and ask their husbands at home and not to get behind the pulpit and preach to a uh, mixed congregation. Uh, so, amen. All right. So, continue as says, in many cases, lines of people would circle the block where she was scheduled to speak, hoping to get a seat. When she traveled, it was usually by train, and she was fiercely independent. <laughs> Uh, insisting on traveling alone despite her blindness until she was up in her 80s. Fanny lived in the rundown ten, uh, tenements of Lower Manhattan so she'd uh, be nearer her beloved rescue missions where she worked with the homeless and addicted. But to me, the most remarkable thing about Fanny Crosby, the author says, was her phenomenal memory. Uh, after her eyes were blinded in infancy, her grandmother, uh, Eunice, took a special interest in teaching her Bible verses. Later, a woman named Mrs. Uh, ha Hawley, H-A-W-L-E-Y, uh, uh, the Crosby's landlady, took over the job, committed to helping Fanny memorize the entire Bible. Every week, the child was given a certain number of chapters to learn, and Mrs. Uh, Hawley, Holly uh, drilled them into her during their review sessions together. Fanny learned by heart all of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Whew, wow. Uh, plus the four Gospels, most of the Psalms, all of Proverbs, and many portions of the rest of the Bible. Whew, that's convicting. 
uh, from the fountainhead of these scriptures flowed her hymns. Uh, so, wow, that's a. Uh, and what is our excuse for not learning the Bible? <laughs> Too busy doing what? <laughs> Nothing important. Uh, so, continuing on, uh, says Iron Sankey in his autobiography gives us the story behind this particular hymn. Fanny Crosby was visiting Mr. W. H. Doan in his home in Cincinnati, in Cincinnati, Ohio. They were talking together about the nearness of God as the sun was setting and evening shadows were gathering around them. The subject so impressed the well-known hymn writer that before retiring she had written the words to this hymn which had become one of the most useful she had ever written. The music by Mr. Doe, uh, Doan uh, so well fitted the words that the hymn has become a special favorite wherever the gospel hymn, hymns are, are known. It was published in 1875 in the little hidden treasure of hymns called Brightest and Best. Underneath the hymn was the scripture quotation, Let us draw near with a true heart. Hebrews 10, 22. Amen. Good uh, story there. Behind this hymn, I am thine, O Lord. Amen. Alright, so that is the end of today's hymn and hymn story. And tomorrow's hymn and hymn story is from this hymn titled Peace Perfect Peace, written by Edward H. Uh, Bicker Stealth and Orlando Gibbons. It was written in 1875, and the passage will be from Isaiah 26.3. Amen. So we'll find out about that hymn and hymn story. Uh, peace, perfect peace. Alright, so put that aside now and sing some scripture songs. Amen. What is that? Alright, so we'll do yesterday's and then we'll do today's a couple more times because it's a good good one to know and a little fun how he does it. So we'll do yesterday's and then we'll uh, do today's a couple more times and we'll end it after that. Amen. Alright, praise the Lord. Psalms 150, verse 6. Let, Let everything, everything that hath breath praise, praise the Lord. Praise, praise ye the Lord. Lord. Amen. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. Amen. All right, let's see how how uh, long we can hold out this word far. Amen. <clears throat> as far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Amen. Here we go. As far as the east is from the west, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. So far, so far, as far as the east is from the west, so far. So far have you removed our transgressions from us. So far, so far, as far as the east is from the west. As far as the east is from the west. So far has he moved our transgressions from us. So far, so far. Amen. All right, let's try that one more time. <laughs> Amen. So, 
And you can always do that in your own time. Uh, so to see how far you can hold your breath. <laughs> Amen. And praise the Lord that He has. All right, here we go. As far as the east is from the west, as far as the east is from the west, so far hath you moved our transgressions from us, so far, so far, as far. From the west, so as far as the east is from the west, so far have moved our transgressions from us, so far, so far. From the west, as far as the east is from the west, so far move the impressions from us, so far, so far. Woo, amen. So, that can be challenging, and uh, it's a good scripture song, and praise the Lord that. Uh, he has moved our transgressions from us as far as the east is from the west. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, that is the end of today's broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then tomorrow's topic for the devotional. And tomorrow will be the 15th, and we're singing 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 4. And it says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Amen. So that's tomorrow's scripture song. And then tomorrow's topic is titled, um, Life's Companions. So that will be tomorrow's uh, topic for the Baptist Bird devotional, Life's Companions, in the passages from Psalm 116, verse 15. So we'll find out more about that tomorrow. And then tomorrow's uh, hymn and hymn story will be from the hymn, Peace, Perfect Peace. Amen. All right. And uh, so that'll be tomorrow's uh, broadcast. So hope you join me then. Uh, until then, um, I'll give you the addresses for these uh, websites here where you can order the C CDs and the Baptist Bread devotional book. Uh, and so the CDs and the book here. I know it's going to be backwards on your screen, but this is the book, uh, song book for the scripture songs. And then the CDs are available on Brother Dean and Sister Patty's website at www.dailyscripturesongs.com. And then the Baptist Bread Devotionals, you can order them on this website at www.timgreenministries.org. And then finally, the um, book here that I read these hymn stories out of is titled, Then Sings My Soul, Book 2, 150 of the world's greatest hymn stories, written by Robert J. Morgan. And you can find that probably at your local bookstore or online. Amen. All right, well, that'll be it for today's broadcast. So, Lord willing, see you all tomorrow. And um, if you are watching uh, on Facebook and you know if somebody doesn't have Facebook, you can always direct them to the YouTube channel, which is uh, Ambassador for Christ Broadcasting, or you can uh, type in Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast and Look me up that way, and then like and subscribe, and hit that notification button for when you uh, will know when I'm posting these up on YouTube after I'm done on Facebook with them. Amen. All right, so thanks again for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you until next time. Remember, Jesus saves. Believe on him. Bye for now.